Hello, I am Gary Brantner of Renard Studios Comics, and this is the show where I talk about the comic books I've read, Kickstarters I've backed, where you can find these comic books, and all sorts of fun stuff. So, let me start with uh, a bunch of excuses here. So, yeah, I have uh, not made a show in a while, because, um, yeah, uh, summer just started, and things have gotten really busy. Uh, my wife took a vacation and so I was home with the kids and I hurt my back and yeah I'm I'm kinda old so uh, yeah I hurt my back that put me out for a week and then the following week I uh, went on a camping trip with the kids then had Father's Day and uh, then came back and uh, this week uh, I've been doing a lot of interesting stuff cleaning the house after the camp trip and um, just a tiny bit of plumbing, not really a whole lot, but just helping out a little bit and uh, trying to get stuff done. Just basically getting books read so that I could review them and uh, trying to do my homework, show notes and stuff. I call that homework. And uh, that took a long time because I had so many emails to go through after uh, that camp trip and uh, so here we are. So, uh, let's see here. What I have read since then, uh, I, I didn't dare take any comics on my camping trip because uh, I didn't want them to get ruined during it. So I just read a regular book during my camping trip. Anyway, enough of that about that. Get on with the reviews, you say, huh? Okay, so here's the first book I read. It's called Deadbeats, Volume 1. Whoop. Came with some stickers cool stuff. I love stickers. I'm a huge fan of stickers. So, Deadbeats Volume 1 here. It's an anthology. That means uh, I'm kind of new to an anthology, so I will explain it like it was explained to me. Basically, it's like those uh, Tales from the Crypt shows and uh, Roddenberry whatever's... Uh, not. I don't know what I'm trying to say there. Um, those... Strange shows that it would just show a different episode about kind of Twilight Zone. That's it. Oh my gosh. Why was that blank in my mind? So Deadbeats. Uh, awesome sticker here. A Wave Blue World. That's who makes Deadbeats. And there's a Deadbeats sticker. And this is also made by the same people that made Maybe Sun Someday. Uh, so when this was in Kickstarter, Volume 1 here, uh, I... I was not able to back it, um, and it, it, it kind of killed me that I wasn't able to back it, so I'm like, oh man, and I was following them on Twitter, El Wave Blue World, and they had a contest. Somehow I won, and uh, so they sent me uh, Deadbeats, Volume 1, and uh, let's see, what was the other one? And they sent me, shoot. All We Ever Wanted, that's another one too that I almost backed too. And uh, so I haven't read that one yet, but I've read this one. And I've read uh, Maybe Someday, which I did back and already reviewed a couple episodes ago. So it was really awesome and uh, got my name in the thank you page on that one. So I'm, I'm thankful for the, that I was able to back that one. And uh, Deadbeats is on Kickstarter right now and guaranteed I'm backing that one. But it needs a lot of help. Uh, a lot of people need to get in on that one. It was so good. I love it. Deadbeats. So here's what Deadbeats is. Deadbeats is a uh, record. Or well, actually, it's a music shop. They sell records. They sell instruments. They sell music sheets. Anything music related. But everything in the shop comes with a price. Not like $5 or $6 or $25 kind of price. Um, the kind of price that comes with cursed items and whatnot. So each item in this shop has a story to it and uh, yeah it's pretty crazy. So we, yeah we've got some good stuff here. Oh let me start here by uh, giving you a little bit of credits here. I can't read them all because the insane amount of uh, creators. There's over 20 yeah, there are over 20 stories in here. So, Tyler Chin Tanner is the pre president, CEO, publisher. He assembled all this. Wen Wendy Chin Tanner is the executive producer, co-publisher. 
Lisa Y. Wu is the Vice President of Sales and Marketing. Joseph Ildridge is the Editor Director. And Nicola Black Design is the uh, Art Designers. Justin Zimmerman is the Media Director. So, one reason, one thing I like about it is uh, Nicola Black Design here did an awesome credits page. Check that out. It looks like uh, the old jukebox things that used to sit on your table at the cafes and you can put in a, well we had one here at a place called Max and you can put in some change and pick the numbers. Here's the songs you want. It's cool stuff. And so yeah, each story says the name of the uh, story and then the creators. Pretty cool way that they did that. Let's see. Hold on to it for a second so you can check it out. Loved it. And uh, yeah. So and this had all kinds of crazy stories in it. Um, one's about uh, archaeologists and stuff finding uh, flutes that release demons into the world. And uh, one that I really, really liked is uh, it's about a CD that. Uh, this, this widow in mourning was given a CD by the shop owner, and uh, when she went home and played it, uh, it, it gave her her husband or boyfriend, I'm not sure which it was, uh, back for a night, kind of like um, that Pixar movie I just watched uh, a couple months ago, or a year ago, and uh, onward, and uh, you know, really good stuff, really good artwork, I mean, check check out that. That's the one I was just talking about, about the CD that brings the person back for the night. And a couple other stories like a cursed Walkman that puts spiders in people's heads. And and then there are these buffer stories with the uh, the start in the shop and the shop owner, which is really cool. She's, she's a vampire, I think. And so, you know, I'm, I'm a sucker for vampire stories. And there's a Nosferatu story. There's a magic feather that enabled a woman to sing her best. And uh, she made a promise to always come back every Tuesday night to that same place to the guy that gave her the feather. And she would sing for him without the feather. And the deal was that it would always work as long as she did that. So she went on tour, broke the promise. You know how it goes. Really good stuff, though. I love how that one ended. Uh, yeah. And... So many good stories. There was a meteor that was coming, and it finally gave this woman the courage to go to the radio and have her music played, and uh, for you know the last day on Earth, kind of thing. And there was a cursed poster, and uh, so much good, so many good stories in here. I I can't even point out one that I did not like because I I love the whole book, Dead Beats, and so I can't wait to see what's in Volume Two. Um, it's on Kickstarter right now. Check it out. I will tell you more about the Kickstarter when I get to the Kickstarter notes of my show segment. So, that's it for uh, Dead Beats. Now on to one called Snow White. And this one I also got from Kickstarter. and uh, But it is also available at Scout Comics. So, but this is the Kickstarter version. Snow White Zombie Apocalypse. And this is... This one here is done by writer Brenton Lengel, artist Luana Vecchio, and lettered by... Lettered and production is by Joel Rodriguez. Edited by Andrea... or Andre Lorenzo Molinari. I'm not sure if that was correct. Andre or Andrea? So, yeah, uh, Snow White Zombie Apocalypse, like, oh, check that out, too. Gotta give credit to the uh, letterer, because there are some really cool stuff that he does in there. And, uh, did that show correctly? Let me see here. There we go. Let's stop for a second there so you can see that. That was really cool. I loved it. And, uh, yeah, a lot of good stuff going on here, and uh, the story is awesome. You, we get to further uh, see what's going on with Snow White as she is drugged through the forest running for her life from zombies and uh, the, apparently there's a werewolf pack of zombies 
and uh, they've met up with the, well, the team is uh, Snow White, she was awoken by Prince Charming, who is, Prince Charming is Rapunzel's boyfriend, significant other, and uh, she's upset that Prince Charming kissed this girl that was sleeping in the woods, and uh, yeah, all that crazy stuff. And, and this one actually does not, I think it started out with a different artist creative team than it is at currently, but still, I'm loving it. The art style is really cool. Let's see if I can show you an awesome page here. Oh yeah. So here they are with the lumberjack and then they've escaped from these, uh, this pack of uh, werewolf zombies and they've ended up in a cottage. But obviously this is fa fairy tale land and this cottage happens to be made out of gingerbread. Really cool. So, so they're Things are going crazy. There's a lot of secrets. I don't want to spoil any of these because there are a lot of bombshells in this one. A lot of bombs in this. So a lot of things are happening and uh, I think Hansel and Gretel stuff going on. And yeah, all sorts of crazy stuff. Really good, really good uh, issue. Can't wait to get the next one. I, the next one is on Kickstarter right now. So it's a good thing that I've reviewed it right now. Bumped it up to the beginning of my read list, just so I could tell you about the Kickstarter for issue four on Kickstarter right now. And uh, yeah, I will tell you more about that when we get to the uh, Kickstarter segment of my show. This one came with a sticker, which that will go on the box that I keep my comics in. And it came with a postcard, which I still have some blank spots on my wall, so I need to put that in there. That is, I don't even know what is going on in that picture. Oh, I think that's the wolf that swallowed Granny, and Granny is busting out of it. Bleh. That's pretty nasty. So that is that postcard. And that is Snow White right there herself from the first cover. So, that makes a cool sticker. Snow White and the Zombie Apocalypse, issue 3. It is signed, and my name's in the thank you page. I forgot to mention that. That's one big thing I always like about Kickstarter comics is they do the thank you page. It's one of my favorite things. And I always get my name in there as Gary Brantner of Renarp Studios Comics, because that's what I call myself. That's who I am everywhere on the socials. And so that's Snow White Zombie Apocalypse. Now, next up, uh, this one's a digital read. It's called Dirty Work at the Crossroads. This is issue one. I read it digitally, and uh, it was pretty cool, cool stuff. Um, so there's this planet, and uh, oh, let me start with some credits here. It has got story by Joshua Metzger, art by Carlos Nito, colored by Luis Anthony Delgado, lettered by Marco Della Verde. Oh, he's a good letterer too. I read a bunch of books with him in it. Logo by Ed Lavalie and designs by Loris Ravina. So, check this out. There's, there's a cool robot on that one. So there's this girl named Sunday, and uh, she's working on this heist on the very first pages, and it goes bad. And she ends up at an ex execution block, and uh, they're about to decapitate her, or electrocute her, and uh, some of the other people up on that uh, execution uh, staged a getaway. A robot comes to bust him out and uh, yeah check out that good letter on that one too. Rat -tat 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 -tat. Pretty cool stuff I love it. And so uh, they, the robot rescues him and uh, she convinces them to let her, her come with him and stuff. So she gets introduced to a person called the mother the mother wants to hire her for um, to assassinate a person called the Queen. I think is that right? Queen Mob, and so uh, she goes to que kill Queen Mob and act to incentivize her. They inject her with this serum that's going to turn her into a mutant, and if she wants to remain the lovely lady that she is. She has to kill the lady and come back to get the uh, serum to uh, 
the antidote serum. So that's how it goes. And then we go into issue two. Same creative team on that one. Check it out. I'll show you all the names. Is it going to clear up? I don't know if that's too bright. My lens is not helping me out there. So here we are. Again, boom, boom, boom. Really good artwork. I, I love the style. And uh, man, yeah, as soon as I see dirty work at the crossroads on Kickstarter or Indiegogo again, I'm going to make sure I back it because that was a mistake that I should not have let that one slip through my cracks. So uh, that's the end of my reviews. Oh man, something's in my eye. That's the end of my reviews, and now I'm going to move on to the uh, mailbox section of my show. Mailbox, mailbox, what's in Renton Arbs mailbox? Okay, so what have we got in my mailbox? I got me a new hat. Oh, check this out. I was uh, wanting a hat for my vacation, and stupidly I ordered it after the vacation, but whatever. A couple times when I hang out in the pool in the yard with my boys, I will be chilling with this hat, make sure I don't get sunburnt. So, that's cool. I love it. Uh, I'm really into Hawaiian print because of my time where I lived there. So I've enamored myself with Hawaiian print stuff. Next up on my mailbox list is a comic called This Land. This Land is about, uh, speaking of Polynesian, uh, it's about some Maori gods and whatnot, which are pretty closely related to uh, Hawaiian and that. So we've got, so yeah, I've got that to look forward to reading. And this one, I actually got the pin on it. And I'm a big fan of pins, so I love that one. Oh yeah, and I mentioned that my, uh, my wife went to Vegas. And she got me a Coke pin that says Vegas on it from this uh, Coke place that sells soda pop, you know, all that fun stuff. So there's two pins to add to my pin collection. Not that I needed extra pins, but you know, I love pins. Then I, I also got one in the mail called Saturn Effect Alpha. That's a pretty cool one. It's about a mining planet and uh, on Saturn, obviously. And this mining community is just is in chaos. Uh, the rebels and miners are revolting and uh, staging an uprisal. Pretty cool stuff. And I love this little note that they give. Uh, I, they, I don't know if they send out these with everybody, but it says, uh, Gary, thanks for supporting. Printed out, obviously. Because of you, we funded our second campaign. All that fun stuff. But then they hand wrote... Uh, Thanks, Gary. Keep making awesome content. The indie community appreciates it. Well, I'm I'm thankful that you appreciate what I can do, and all I am doing really is just reading a comic book and telling people what I think of it. So that's cool. Um, oh yeah, and this one, man, I've been waiting for this guy for a while. This one's from Jason Brubaker. He's a favorite of mine. He did a comic series called Sithra that I freaking love. Uh, you ought to look it up. Uh, get your copies. Of, there's Sithra hardbacks out there. This one's hard, too. That actually glows in the dark. I should, if I was close to the light switch, I'd turn it off and show you. Actually, maybe I should. Maybe later. I'll do that at the end, okay? So, Phobos here. Yeah, I got a little sample of it a long time ago from... Um, what is that site called? Patreon. Oh, wow. There's a blank spot in there. So, if I ever run into them at a... Con, I can ask him to draw me a little something, something. That'd be cool. That'd be fun. Yeah, I've always been wanting to meet him. Actually, he's kind of neighbors. He just lives about 40 to an hour, 40 minutes to an hour away. So that's pretty cool. Oh, it's got a thank you page too. Awesome. G, 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 G. Yep. Gary Brantner. Nope. I don't see my name there. What's up with that? Anyway. So Phobos, hardback, it's a little Frankenstein-ish kind of thing. I'll have to show you some glow-in-the-darks later. And then I also got in one called The Dancer. Check that out. There's an ad for the Kickstarter that I don't know if it's currently running or not. I, I think it ended while I was away from Wi-Fi. But Haunting, like Father, like Daughter. 
it was on Kickstarter, or it is. I'm not sure which. No, I'm pretty sure I would be telling you about it if I knew if it was. So I got the Dancer. Oh yeah, check that out. There's an awesome print. Print that features uh, characters from another book I also backed. So that's pretty cool. So there's the Dancer. That's cool. I love it. Can't wait to read that one. Throw it in the read pile. Ooh, here's another one. Uh, so this show is not for kids, obviously. So here's a book called Sex and Violence. Sex and Violence, Volume 1. That's not the one I backed, though. It's just a backup that I got. A bunch of uh, fun stories. Oh, yeah, and there's a Certificate of Authenticity. That's pretty cool. Not that I would ever need it, because when am I ever going to sell these? I'm going to keep the, all these comics forever. There's the one I backed. Sex and Violence, Volume 3. So I don't have a 2. I've got 1 and 3. But they're all. each story is uh, anthology style, standalone. And uh, so I don't think I need... Ooh, cannot show you the pages I flipped through, but that's... I got the Frank Frazetta co cover. Uh, Frank Frazetta, you may know, is uh, well. He's he's no longer with us, but his art is still with us, and it is still awesome. And uh, yeah, really cool stuff. Oh yeah, check out that awesome back cover too. Let me get it out of the glare there. Oh yeah, there we go. Cool stuff. So awesome! I can't wait to get into that. Put that in the read pile. Man, that read pile. I just can never keep up with that one. Oh, and here's one from a favorite podcaster of mine. Jason Inman, he does a podcast called uh, Geek History Lesson. And here is Super Best Friend. Can't wait to read that one, too. In the read list, read, read pile. Uh, he did a comic called Jupiter Jet, which I backed for Jupiter Jet and the Forgotten Radio. And so I was missing this one from my collection. Added it to a, through the backer kit. So now that's in the read pile also. And here's one called Berserker Solo Island. And this is from the uh, team that brought me uh, Lovecraft PI. Oh yeah, I see a sticker in there too. That's cool. So Berserker Solo Island. It's in the uh, Lovecraft style. So okay, that one will be going in the uh, read pile as well. All right, so, so much going in the read pile. Holy cow. That's an insane read pile, right? Where am I now? Okay, so, reviewed three comics. Now I'm on to the campaign corner. This is the part where I tell you about all the Kickstarters and Indiegogo campaigns that are going that you need to know about. They're ones that I've either backed or I think are really cool and really wish I could back, but, you know, if I had the money, I would be back in every single thing I mention. Because there are so many awesome ones. So, first up on my campaign corner is one called Sex Spies and Rock and Roll Anthology. It is a anthology comic books, a retro spy caper anthology book with multiple stories included. Cold War Espionage meets Rock and Roll. 96 pages of awesomeness. Oh yeah, cool stuff. You know what this needs is a a uh, stretch goal where you get a guitar pick with the characters on it. That'd be so cool. And uh, obviously I'd be giving that to my daughter because she actually plays guitar. Which I've given her, um, let's see, I think there's been two campaigns that I backed that had guitar picks. Um, one called, uh, oh, it was from Catalyst Comics, Tilt. And... Uh, Goth Ghost Girl, which is about a band, uh, Imminent Hour, which I've worn that shirt before too. Oh yeah, did I mention that I got a Deadbeat shirt with my comic? So, yeah, 96 pages. This story follows a group of spies called the ISF, International Fo Security Foundation. And uh, as they go through different capers throughout the world, uh, busting up Nazis and Russians or something, during the Cold War era, and uh, sounds pretty cool. Uh, kind of like, um... oh my gosh, why am I so scatterbrained right now? 
it's getting pretty late. It's time for bed. It's midnight now, so uh, yeah, I need to get through this. Um, so yeah, check out Sex Spies and Rock and Roll Anthology comic books on Kickstarter right now till June 27th, and it is currently the 26th, so you have until tomorrow to back this campaign, Sex, Spies, and Rock and Roll Anthology comic books on Kickstarter until tomorrow, June 27th. Michael Turner's Fathom is the core is on Kickstarter right now. A brand new 40 page historic Fathom event. Perfect jumping on point for new readers. Um, yeah, so Fathom's been around since 1998 and I love it. I, if I could pan the camera over this way, you'd see a whole bunch of Fathom posters on this wall. And, uh, yeah, uh, hold on. And, uh, it was devastating to me when, uh, Michael Turner died in, um, was it 2004 or 2006? I don't know. It was the early 2000s, and, uh, wow. Because uh, we're like we were like the same age, and so it just blew me away that uh, I don't know that someone could die from something like that cancer, and uh, so anyway, I don't know why I keep going down those weird morbid rabbit holes. Um, so Michael Turner's Fathom, the core, his brand new story, forty pages, and uh, man, I I've been out of touch with the Fathom universe. Uh, for a good while, and uh, it'd be interesting. I can't wait to, to see what's going on. It's perfect jumping on point for new readers, and even old readers that have kind of lost their way like me. So check out Michael Turner's Fathom, The Core, on Kickstarter until June 30th. Oh man, here's one. So, uh, a while ago, I backed this one. It's called Not So Fairy Tales, a fractured fairy tale anthology. So. Imagine an anthology of classic fairy tales reimagined for a more modern audience. Uh, this is a tribute to fairy tales of all kinds, which me, a maker of Peter Pan the Vampire comics, uh, kind of wish that maybe one of my issues would have made it in, but maybe next time. 172 pages of a hardcover comic book and a foreword by Tyler James. Uh, podcaster of the comics launch um one that i listened to quite a bit so not sure if that's how i heard about this or maybe he shared it on the twitters so not so fair tells a fractured fairy tale anthology 172 pages hardcover graphic novel can't wait to get that one in the mail um back it by june 30th i think it's already funded so i know i'm already getting mine make sure you get yours also Pop Scars 1 and 2. This is one i really debating hard if I'm going to back it or not. Uh, it's got a crazy good art style, it, insane looking art, lots of popping colors, which if you're going to name your comic Pop Scars, it better have a lot of popping colors, right? So, it's a Hollywood revenge story about Pinky and the famous movie producer she is out to kill, who just so happens to be her father. And uh, it's got really cool art, artwork, compelling story in the preview pages, and it's R-rated, so watch out for that. It's, it's likened unto a um, Kill Bill, Tarantino kind of film thing going on, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And uh, so if you took all those, mixed them together, this is the comic you'd get. Um, drawn, by, drawn and colored by the creative team of Kill Pop, or Killtopia, I mean. And for twenty dollars, gets you both, both books in hard copy and a pin, which I'm a sucker for pins, and it's a pin of a pin. How weird is that? A push pin pin that you could put on your tie tag. Or for thirty dollars, you get uh, all of that signed, the pin, and your name in the thank you page. So I don't know which one I would go for. Either just the $20 or the $30. I'm thinking about it. Really debating that one. Really thinking. Uh, I don't know. My funds are a lot, a little low right now because, uh, because.
because I've been uh, on vacation in that and uh, my extra money hasn't been coming in from stuff. So we'll see. Um, Deadbeats Volume 2 it, London Calling is on Kickstarter right now. And as you know, I loved Deadbeats, so I'm already back in this one. <coughs> and uh, yeah, I can't wait to see it. 160 pages, full color music themed horror comics centered around the curiosities for sale at one particular record store managed by an enigmatic shopkeeper who is a vampire. Really cool stuff. And uh, a lot of, holy cow, so many good artists on this one. Can't wait to see it. It's from a wave blue world. And yeah, as much as I loved volume one, I, you know I'm going to be there for volume two. Can't wait. Um, I should, oh, I should have wrote down how much uh, it cost to get the first hardcover. That's something I'm going to start incorporating into my uh, notes is how much the bare minimum is to get the hard copy. All right, mask one through three. This one is one I'm probably going to go on right after making this episode. I'm going to go on there and back it. Uh, cyberpunk thriller comics, forbidden technology, an alien magic, government conspiracy, and a masked vigilante who plots revolution. I think this is this is from Ovation Comics, and uh, that. It's from uh, the same team that brings you, um, oh, who else have I got Ovation Comics? Um, Go Goth Ghost Girl, that's the one. So it's from that team. Uh, so I think I am going to jump in on this one. I like that writing style, and I like the art style, even though it's not the same artist as that one. But uh, yeah, it looks really good. And the preview that I read in the uh, Kickstarter campaign, there's a bunch of pages up there. They look really good, and wow, the scene that they dropped in on that Kickstarter, that's enough right there to make me want to back it. And so this each issue is 32 pages long, or at least this one is, and uh, it is $25 for the catch-up tier. So one through three issues for 25 bucks, that's actually a really good deal. And I think, yeah, as soon as I turn this camera off, I'm going to go on to uh, the Kickstarter and back it. Sorry, one more drink. Uh, Filth and Grammar is a comic book about editor's secrets. It's an editor's secret handbook to comic books. Okay, 160 pages, step-by-step -step guide to making comics from the cover to cover. It's the first time Bond, Shelley Bond, reveals the alchemy and method to her editorial madness. So, uh, yeah, I have I think I've read a, quite a handful of Shelley Bond books and loved them. And so seeing this editorial's look inside behind the curtain stuff made me want to back this one. And she's got uh, some creative artists and letters working on the uh, some pictures here and there on some of the pages. So check it out. Filth and Grammar. Oh, did I even tell you the last one was on Kickstarter? Tell you. July 1st. Okay, so Filth and Grammar, Mask 1 through 3, and Deadbeats are all on Kickstarter until July 1st. So check it out. Oh, and Pop Scars is also on there until July 1st. Here's another anthology called Meanwhile, number 10. Meanwhile, number 10. Oh, wow, they're up to 10 already. That's crazy cool. So, the best anthology you've ever read. Uh, 128 pages. Wow, that's awesome. This one has no theme, and so d don't. They didn't want to uh, decline any stories because it didn't have a robot in it or an apocalypse or uh, whatever. But yeah, if you're a fan of the love, death, and robots thing, that's what an anthology is. And uh, I've suddenly become a fan of the genre of anthologies. And so, meanwhile, sounds really cool. Uh, just a bunch of stories that are for the love of comic book writing, for the love of comic book making and reading. So if you love all of that, make reading comic books, then check out Meanwhile, Volume 10. And I'm sure you can get more than one volume, nine others. So check out Meanwhile, Volume 10, on Kickstarter until July 8th. 
fog line. Oh man, this is another one that I'm debating backing. For 40 years, Henry has been haunted by a hit and run fatality he buried in the woods. Now, a true crime podcast threatens to expose him. So, it's a 36 comic book about the guilt, shame, and paranoia of Henry, a retired trucker, who hit a woman on the highway in the fog. Didn't know what to do, so he buried her. But, now a mischief. Now a podcast is investigating the mysterious disapp disappearance of his victim. It is all drawn in landscape format, in black and white, grayscale, whatnot. And it's only $18 for the hard copy. Wow, that's not bad. And uh, so Fogline is on Kickstarter until July 9th. And man, I, will not, I would not be surprised to see this one turned into a show or something. Because holy cow, that sounds awesome. So check out Fogline on Kickstarter until July 9th. Uh, man, if I could really swing it, I want to back that one. Okay, here's Snow White Zombie Apocalypse 4. You could get the catch-up tier if you want. 1 through 4 is on Kickstarter right now. Snow White awakens to Prince Charming's kiss. 28 day days later, the fourth installment of Ringo Award-nominated Dark Fantasy series starts. So, where is it going to go from there? What is going to happen to this weird cast of uh, Snow White and Rapunzel, Prince Charming, and the Lumberjack? Who knows? Uh, so I'm going to find out, obviously. So I'm backing it. It's on Kickstarter right now until July 15th. Oh man, here's one that I really, really love and I can't not back this one. It doesn't matter how much money, I will go broke back in these ones. Destiny New York, volume, what volume are we on now, 5? Volume 5, Destiny New York, volume 5, is on Kickstarter right now, until July 15th. Logan used to be a magical girl. Lilith is the last surviving member of a mystical crime family. Their epic love story continues. Or does it? As far as I know, they're broken up. So school, where magical people get told that they're prophecies by a seer, Logan meets Lilith. Love sparks and ends. These, they're now on opposite coasts. Uh, Logan moved to California and is now dating a new seer uh, over there. And Lilith stayed in New York to run her family's crime syndicate thing. So it's crazy good. I love it. There are even, even spin-offs that I've backed every single one of those. Gangster Asperista. Cherry Gilbert, Necromancer, and Smokeweed See the Future, which Gangster Asperisa is the only one I've so far got and read. The other two, I think, are in the mail right now. And uh, so I can't wait to get Cherry Gilbert, Necromancer, and Smokeweed See the Future in the mail so I can read those and see what's going on here. Definitely got to read those before I get this Destiny New York Volume 5 which is on Kickstarter till July 15th. And yeah, I'm back in this one because I'm never gonna miss a Destiny New York. Okay, Planar Jane 1 through 3 is on Kickstarter. I just reviewed those uh, issues 1 and 2 on, th I think, the last ep episode show. So, Planar Jane 1 through 3. Issue 3 is a darkly comic story of Jane Pearson, a seemingly ordinary teen girl who becomes a brutally efficient killer for hire. This is all drawn in black, white, and red. Really cool stuff, and uh, I love that style. It works really well with this storyline, and I was I was really impressed with the way they did the last uh, issue, so I'm back in this again. Planar Jane, issues 1 through 3, is on Kickstarter until July 15th. And here's one, wow, they've got a really far end, end date. Vampire Bloodlines 2 is on Kickstarter right now. IV Cosplayer Cover is uh, the tier I'm backing. I really love these because they print them in um, 5 by 7.5. So it's about the size of this piece of paper I'm holding. Kind of small. Not standard comic book size, but it works. It, it totally works with this storyline, and it's awesome. So, there are two vampires 
who both think that they are the rightful queens of the vampire community. And this is the comic about their fight and all that stuff to uh, get rightful, um, I don't know, control over the vampire community. So check it out. Uh, they're, they print through Kablam, who's also who I print through, so I love that. And I uh, love to support fellow Kablammers. So check out Vampire Bloodlines on Kickstarter until August 8th. Wow, so that's crazy. That's a long end date. And uh, let's see, uh, Cypher Team IO2 was on Kickstarter, but it got canceled. And I just barely received uh, Cypher Team IO1 in the mail a couple weeks back. So I'm going to have to be reading that one soon because I'm sure the Kickstarter is coming back soon with Vengeance. What have I been watching lately? I have been watching a sh show called Loki. I'm not sure if you heard of it. It's a it's based on the Thor comics. It's Thor's brother Loki, and uh, he's kind of displaced out of time. All that fun stuff. And yet, yeah, who am I kidding? You go. You know who what the show is. Anyway, I'm loving Loki. Uh, the minute I wake up every morning, Wednesday morning, my daughters are like, "When can we watch it?" I have two teenage daughters, so they're loving it. So check out Loki. It's awesome. And I watched one uh, just recently before uh, lunch today, and it's called Fatherhood. It's on Netflix, and it's got uh, Kevin Hart in it. Oh my gosh, it's so sad. It made me cry so much. It was so good. All the actors in it are amazing, and wow, damn. So watch Fatherhood on Netflix. You will be pleasantly surprised, and even the show has a, uh, a good excuse in it. There's a guy, he starts crying, he's like, man, somebody's cutting onions around here. So, I'm going to be saying that every time I cry now, because holy crap, that was a good one. So, uh, that's the end of my show. Usually, I go into a spill on joining Patreon, but uh, nobody's joined my Patreon yet. If you join my Patreon, Rent Art Studios Comics, uh, I will give you a shout out on this show, and uh, that's that. Uh, so if you do like what I'm doing, and you want to throw some money, some bones my way, check me out on um, Patreon, support me there, or if you want to support me in other ways, you could go to IndiePlanet.com, buy Peter Pan the Vampire hard copies, and uh, that shoots a little bones my way too, helps me out. You know what? Even if you go to IndiePlanet.com, download the free comics, you could get issues 1, 2, and 3 of Peter Pan the Vampire for free. And that helps me out, too. It doesn't matter how many times you download it. Uh, it helps me out because uh, it goes through the algorithm, and people start thinking, oh my gosh, it's popular. It starts showing up on the front page. That helps me out a lot. So, yeah, go. Go to IndiePlanet.com, download Peter Pan the Vampire, and what's even better is if you read it and you just throw me a tweet or a shout out on Facebook and say, hey, I really like this Peter Pan the Vampire. That would make my day. Oh my gosh. Yeah, because I usually spend my days cleaning 23 toilets out at a warehouse called Wally World. And if I open up my phone and see an email that says uh, somebody downloaded my comic book, oh my gosh, you don't, you have no idea how happy that makes me. Anyway. Gotta look for the sunshine where you can, right? So, thank you for watching my goofy show. I'm sorry, I've been really weird. This is how I get when I'm tired, I guess. And so, I'm gonna sign off now. Oh yeah, and I was gonna, I was gonna show you how this glows in the dark. So, let me get going on that. Oh, it's not showing up. Shoot. Okay, well, I'm going to sign off now.